Hello, welcome to Nanako Gardens. My name is Pete Schaefer. I'm Chip Schaefer. And uh, we're the owners of this greenhouse operation. Uh, it's been in business for about 41 years, since 1973. So this year, 2014 spring season, we figured we'd give you a snapshot of the behind the scenes of the everyday operation here. Um, the reason being is we sometimes get some feedback from customers when we're open for the season. Uh, if we run out of a certain item or a certain plant runs out of stock, uh, a customer may ask, when are you getting your next truckload in? Uh, and we reply with, uh, we grow everything here on site. And sometimes we get a surprised look or a surprised response, but in fact we do grow everything here on site. And uh, we wanted to give a little snapshot into how all of that actually works. Um, you might drive by this time of year and see the place looking pretty desolate. It's now February, um, but in fact we have several people working here, several transplanters on site, and several greenhouses filled as you may be able to see behind us. Um, so we'll give you some inside scoop on what we're actually doing here and how we actually all get it all grown right here. So like Pete said, we grow everything here. Um, we have a team of skilled growers who spend a lot of time getting plants ready for you guys to buy in the spring. So this will be a behind the scenes look at, at how we do that. We'll start with showing you how we fill our pots with soil and how the fellows in the mix house uh, go about doing that. That takes a lot of work. Only a few people touch all of the pots for all of the plants that we grow. And then we do about a third of our plants from seeds, a third of our plants from unrooted cuttings, and about a third of our plants from rooted cuttings of some patented material. So this behind the scenes look will give you a little bit of an idea of how we do things here at Nanako Gardens. It's been a long winter and I'm sure you guys are ready to see some plants. Okay, so we've moved over to House 11. House 11 is a little bit unique at Nanako Gardens in that it is our propagation house. As we talked before, uh, we do start one third of our seeds and one third of our plants from seeds and one third of our plants from cuttings and that takes place in house 11. Uh, today I'm propagating plants from seed and I'm sowing tomatoes. It is the end of February, week 9 in our calendar and that's the week that we start the first crop of foraged tomatoes. It was about negative 15 last night uh, with the wind chill and today's temperature is about 14 degrees, 15 degrees, but inside the greenhouse it's actually about 72, 73. So the propagation house is always kept warmer than most of the other greenhouses uh, because seeds generally germinate at around 72 degrees, uh, generally speaking. Um, so, uh, and another way this house is unique is that we have heated benches. Um, and that's what we use uh, to uh, propagate all our seedlings. We then cover them up with Rime to hold the humidity in, um, and it creates a perfect environment for our seeds to germinate. So to give you an idea of how we germinate our seeds, we use a special seed starting soil. It has no perlite in it. Uh, retains moisture very well. It's just peat moss and vermiculite. Uh, we press rows into it, similar to uh, a furrow in the field. Um, and then I have my handy dandy cedar here, which is an old razor uh, with a little tray on it. So when I turn it on, uh, the razor vibrates the tray, the seeds line up, and I can sew them into each row uh, of the seed soil. So uh, right now I'm sewing tomato Laroma. Laroma is a paste tomato, very popular in the area for canning. Uh, making sauces. It's a very meaty tomato. Not very many seeds in it. It's very, uh, it's very good for sauces. Probably one of the most, most popular types. That and San Marzano for uh, making sauces. So I need to do 274 inch pots. So I'm going to shoot for sowing around 300 seeds. That's about 50 seeds in each row here.
So not every seed is going to germinate in there, so you might might see that I did a few extra than that. Uh, the germination of this particular variety is very high, 98%. So out of every 100 seeds, I should get about 98 under perfect conditions, which we try to create here. So after I sow the seeds, uh, some seeds need light to germinate. Some seeds need darkness to germinate. Tomatoes do not like light to germinate. They like to be covered lightly. So I'm using vermiculite, which is a, a soilless mix amenity. And I'm gonna cover the seeds lightly, each row, with a light coating of vermiculite. Put the label in it for Laroma. And it will go on to the heated bench with the rest of the tomato crop. I'll then water these in and set the temperature on this bench to be about 72 degrees. Um, and I should start seeing the tomatoes germinate in about a week or so. Here you can see some of the other uh, seedlings that have been here for a little while. And we'll do them in stages and take the seedlings off as they germinate and put them at the temperature that they would ideally like to grow. So all the seeds start in one house and then they move to the different houses where the different temperatures are ideal for that particular plant's needs and how they grow best. And that is how we sow seeds at Nanico Gardens. Okay, Diane, what are you working on today? I am taking cuttings from our ivy geraniums nice. to plant into four inch pots. We'll put these on a heated misted bench till they root. Great. And we wean them off from the heat and the mist, and when they're rooted, we'll pop them up. Okay. So, what are you looking for when you? What do you know is a good cutting? What's a good cutting? A nice, thick, sturdy cutting that when you strip the bottom leaves off, there's still a little bit to stick down into the soil. Okay. And uh, that's an ideal cutting right here. Okay. Actually. Nice. And. How many cuttings do you think you're taking here? Well, on these baskets, I'm only taking one per plant. There's three plants in the baskets, and I'm okay. just taking one per plant. That way, they'll be more even and okay. won't be taking off too many. You're not you're not doing anything that you wouldn't normally do anyway, right? This is probably a stage, a good stage that you would pinch this plant. Yes, anyway. when the cuttings are taken, I'll go back and just do any more light pinching if they okay. need it to even them up. So it's essentially, you're taking a pinch, but you're actually able to use that pinch as a cutting yes, yes. Uh, and, and root them. And yes. then, um, what do you root them in? You're just a little six-pack? or? Um, we have, yeah, 806s. Okay. Yep, yep. And, uh, good. How long have you been taking cuttings like this for? 23 years. 23 years. Yes, 23 wow. years. 23 years. Excellent, excellent. Yep. So you'll, you're on a certain variety here. You're on yes. Contessa Bicolor. Yes. How many different varieties do you think you're doing today? Oh my goodness. Well, I've done guess. five or six, and I've probably got ten more to go. Okay. And a couple hundred cuttings altogether, all together. All yeah, yeah. There's several hundred. Yeah. Okay. This variety right here, I'm doing seventy-two. Nice. So I know we get our plants from. You know, we talked earlier about we get our plants from three different places: seeds, unrooted cuttings, and rooted cuttings. What other types of unrooted cuttings do we do? Well, today I've already done the New Guinean patients. Um, all our fuchsia hanging baskets come from unrooted cuttings. Right. Um, herbs, uh, yeah. just a lot of, um, a lot. A lot of different <laughs> yes. varieties. Yes. Well, great. Well, yes. thanks for showing us uh, how you do it. We're just going to watch you take a few more cuttings here, Maybe. and uh, then we'll move on, and maybe we'll get to see you sticking those cuttings later. Okay. All right, Diane, so we're back from house two. We've come over to house 11, the propagation house, and uh, we're ready to stick those cuttings that you just showed us you took off those hanging baskets. And we're just going right into the propagation soil. Yes. yes. Good. These don't need any hormone. They root very well on their own. Show us what one looks like right before you clean it and then right after. Okay. So you uh, You can see the extra leaves and the flower buds on it. Yeah. Strip all that off. And depending on how many leaves I might leave, you know, at least one big one. I try to leave one big one. Okay. And then right stick it right in the center the soil. of the soil. Yeah, about a quarter inch or so down. This okay. one here doesn't need anything. Okay. 
you ever come across a cutting that you've taken that sometimes during this process you won't use? Yes, if they're too small or if I notice damage or... Okay. These are pretty it's okay. nice. You could, you, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm just curious to what you're doing. So this variety is the Contessa Burgundy Bicolor. Yes. So we're very particular about you making sure that you get the right variety with the right tag, right tag I assume? Yes, because there's also a Contessa Burgundy. Oh boy. So. There's Very a few careful. other bicolors, I think. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm putting the flat on the heated misted bench. And I'm going to set the automatic system to have the mist come on at intervals uh, for six seconds every 20 minutes. Today we're here with Donna, and Donna is planting some rooted cuttings. We talked earlier about how we get our plants from three different places. Uh, unrooted cuttings, seeds, and rooted cuttings, also called rooted plugs. Um, so these are some examples of rooted cuttings. Donna, can you hold one up for us and show us what one looks like? Good. So already rooted, already propagated in a, in a cell tray. Um, and what variety is that, Donna? This is Euphorbia Diamond Cross. Good. Okay. And could I see a tag real quick? Is sure. That, is that what you're tagging with? Great. Yes. So Euphorbia Diamond Frost, so that's a proven winner brand. Uh, that's an example of uh, a branded plant that um, the proven winners has a patent to propagate. Um, so we cannot root them here unless we're licensed to do so. So we buy them in as rooted plugs, as young as we can get them, uh, and then we grow them on. Great. Thanks, Donna. So Euphorbia Diamond Frost, how many other varieties have you planted today, would you say? Oh, about a dozen. <laughs> That's a lot. So this house I'm just looking around is full of million bells, caliber coas, petunias, some dahlias. Do you have a favorite? Uh, the million bells. You like the million bells? Yes. The different, uh, many different colors yes. to choose from? Great, great. How long have you been doing this for? Oh, about nine years. Nine years. This is your ninth season? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, that's, it's your own fault you do such a great job that we have to keep coming back. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good problem. Good. So as you can see, some of these euphorbias um, are a little tall. So another practice that we'll do in this process uh, is pinch them back once they're rooted in their four inch pot or four and a half inch pot. Um, and about two weeks from now, we'll go back through and pinch off any long shoots uh, and every place we pinch it, that plant will branch again. Uh, so Euphorbia is an example of uh, one of those plants that we'll have to pinch back. And these are a little, a little bigger than normal uh, coming into us. Um, but yeah, another, another part of the process. But we like to buy them in as young as we can so that we can uh, grow them on ourselves. And this is about as young as you can get them. So it's week 12 this week. Uh, today happens to be the first day of spring. Uh, so in two weeks, we'll come back and pinch these in week 14, and Donna will probably be the one to come back and pinch them, since she's pretty much planted this whole house. Um, that way, if she pinches them, we can rename the house the Donna Green House. <laughs> very good, Donna. Thank you very much for showing us what you do. You're welcome.